Okay, everybody. Um, thanks for checking out my video. I'm just going to kind of run through this a little bit. I had to go back and kind of, I'm going to record this real quick. Um, this is my first attempt at trying to edit a video, meaning cut out some of the some of the sections of the video that uh, probably weren't pertinent. Uh, you know, it was me just kind of because I don't have, I don't use a script. I don't use anything like that. I'm just going off of my uh, personal knowledge and my thought process. I don't have any like set agenda or anything like that. So I hope you guys are enjoying these videos because they they really are strictly just you know they're my opinion and my experiences and and everything else. And I'm trying to put this out there as as uh, candid and as true as I possibly can for you guys to take a look at them. Uh, and uh, this is going to be the part two of the string follow versus back set. Uh, video that I had talked about. I finally got the bow in. So, uh, I hope you enjoy this video. And if you have any questions or anything at the end of it, or if you have any, uh, comments or whatever, please feel free to, to, uh, put them at the bottom of the page and thank you all for, uh, uh gained quite a few subscribers and I'm going to keep trying to do these videos as long as, uh, there, and there's a bunch of things that we can talk about as far as traditional archery and these ASL bows and wood arrows and strings and whatever else. So, Anyway, bear with me. I'm learning. Uh, thank you guys for being patient. I'm learning on how to how to how to do some vid, some video editing. Uh, I'm still not good at it, as you will tell in this video pretty quick. But <laughs> thank you guys for uh, tuning in, and let's get to the video. Okay, everybody. Uh, had a viewer, uh, one of my subscribers, uh, caught up with me and asked a question. Uh, he, he's, he's shopping a bow. He's shopping a long bow. And, uh, he was, uh, asking some questions, uh, several different things about different styles of, of ASL long bows, which these are both, you can see they're both ASL bows. Um, and he was talking about, uh, back set versus, uh, string follow. And, uh, as I mentioned in my first video, um, he was trying to make up his mind which would be the best way to go and now his his draw weight i forget i think it was something like 45 pounds or something like that that's that's what he was kind of shooting for was 45 pounds and so i had he was messaging me and i told him that i would make a video because uh i have uh, a bow that is uh, 56 pounds at my draw length and then, I had, and then I had ordered another bow uh, that was 55 pounds at my draw length, and it came in. So I, and what I did, I don't have chronographs and things like that, but what I did was I, uh, I did take a digital scale and draw, draw both the bows to, to my draw length, and they both weigh out within one pound of each other. Uh, they're both uh, 68 inches long, uh, and one of these bows has got... Uh, is a string follow design and one of these bows has got just a little bit of back set in it uh, they're, they're, so it's going to be a very very close uh, comparison as far as uh, you know the, the shootability uh, um, speed and things like that now when I mention speed what I'm talking about is uh, not measured with a chronograph because I don't have one and I don't use one. I don't really feel like it's necessary. Um, to me, it's not anyway. Um, what I'm looking at is the shootability of the bow for the individual that's shooting it. Uh, some people believe that uh, a backset bow is just extraordinarily faster than any other bow. Um, and then, uh, and uh, that a... Uh, String follow bow is uh, sluggish. As a matter of fact, the man that uh, was asking me the questions about the string follow bow, that was the word he used that he had heard that uh, string follow bows are sluggish compared to the other. Well, uh, I'm going to shoot a few arrows. Uh, I got them both strung right now, so you can't really tell which one's which. I mean, unless you've got a perfectly good eye or something, it'd be hard to tell which one's which. Uh, so let me just, I'm going to shoot a few arrows and then, uh, I'll, you know, take a little bit of a break. I'm not going to shoot a bunch of arrows. I'll shoot two or three arrows with each bow 
and then we'll talk about uh, uh, which ones which, what the what the differences are, and then uh, some some pretty uh, uh, pretty good data or pretty good opinions, I guess is the best way to put it, as to uh, cast and speed and things like that when you're comparing the two bows. So let me uh, let me shoot a little bit and uh, I'm not gonna not gonna really talk about which one I'm shooting until after I'm done. That way you, you, you'll hear the sounds of the bow, you'll hear uh, you know the arrow when it's released and when it hits the target. I got a target out there about Oh, I don't know, 15 yards or so, and we'll talk more about that towards the end of the video. Okay, so talk a little bit about these two bows at the beginning of the video. Um, and I wanted to uh, kind of discuss uh, the differences between the two. Uh, I didn't realize, I apologize, I didn't realize where I was set up over there a while ago. I was, my, everything was kind of in the shade, so it was kind of hard to see everything. Again, I'm not a, a real video editor or anything else so it's kind of hard for me to do these videos and mostly it's just about information anyway so uh, so hopefully uh, you guys still are enjoying these videos so uh, anyway back to the uh, back to the uh, comparison um, this bow is a northern mist uh, northern mist classic it is uh, 56 pounds at 30 inches that's my draw length and it the classic is not necessarily uh, classified or, or he doesn't advertise it as a uh, back set bow but uh, I'll try to do this without as you can see when the bow is unstrung I don't know if you'll be able to see it uh, if you look down the handle you can see that the limbs curve away from the handle or towards the back of the bow just a little bit I mean it's not a lot but it is definitely a little bit of back set I don't know if you're actually able to focus on that uh, in the video that that is what is considered a, a certain amount of back set some are, some if a bow is built in a back set form then it would have even even more back set so and the and the principle behind back set is uh, to, to gain more speed uh, more than anything else uh, as far as the bow design itself now this bow is the bow that I was waiting on that I talked about in the first video actually it's not this is one exactly like it uh, I just happened to get both of them there the other one I was waiting on was a takedown and I'll make another video about it too and talk specifically about the northern mist uh, Shelton which the Northern Miss Shelton is a is a string follow bow. It's built in a form to, to make it a string follow bow. Let me uh, let me unstring it so I can show you what I'm talking about here. Okay, if you look down at this bow, 
if you look down the handle, look at the handle, you can see that the limbs are curved a little bit back towards the back of towards the belly of the bow. I don't know if you're able to be able to see that or not. Uh, I'll try to try to show you both ends. Okay, and Steve probably kill me if you see me laying these bows on the ground. Um, the idea behind the string follow, uh, one of, and I'm not quoting, but the, the general sentiment from, from Howard Hill back in the day was, all things being equal, a string follow bow would be more accurate. Um, and I don't know why you wouldn't listen to Howard Hill himself. I mean, he, he, you, if you can find that quote, I'm sure it's on the internet somewhere else. But uh, that was Howard Hill's opinion of the string follow design. Uh, the differences between the two. The bow with a little bit of back set, meaning the limbs are forward of the handle just a little bit, the limb tips are towards the handle, forward of the handle a little bit, uh, tends to be uh, uh, a little more nervous, I guess is the word, or, or jumpy when you shoot it. Okay, uh, there's no real, you know, when you're talking about a 68 inch bow, it's, it's you know, people always want a smooth bow. This, the, the bow with the back set in it is definitely smooth. It's just the draw stroke when you draw the bow, uh, it does have a different feel to it. It doesn't make it not smooth, it just does have a diff different feel. Uh, the release is a little bit more uh, nervous, I guess, is, is the best way to describe it. Nothing wrong with it. Uh, I killed a, uh, I bought this bow and took it out that same weekend and killed a hog with it. Uh, it ab absolutely shoots fine and, and it is a great bow. Um, I have other models of other, other bowyers as well and they all seem to be, if, you know, as long, if they are pretty straight or got just a little touch of back set in them, they're plenty fast to, to hunt with uh, and, they're, and, they, and they all shoot well, okay? Uh, if and then to the string follow bow, the string follow bow to me feels like it's a little more uh, almost like a cushion whenever you're pulling the first third or so of the of the draw stroke. Once you get it back to full draw, you're still holding the, the whatever the draw weight is of the bow. You're still holding all of it. It's not giving you any like real advantage. Okay. Uh, the only the only thing that I would say uh, uh, about advantage is is to me the, the string follow bow feels softer when it shoots. It feels smoother and it feels softer. Uh, and I'm not talking about hand shock. Hand shock is totally related to the way you grip the bow and the weight of the arrow. Uh, most people are all hung up on these bows being real hand shocky. That is just not true at all. Um, if you got a 350 grain arrow in it and you're not holding this bow right, I guarantee you, you're going to have a bad, have a bad experience. But with a hunting weight arrow, the arrows that I was shooting earlier, uh, they're 650 grains and up. Uh, they're, they're wood arrows, uh, with, uh, close to a 200 grain point. I don't remember. I think they're 185 grain points or something like that. It's a six, it's 650 plus grain arrow wood. So, uh, there is no hand shock, uh, at least, you know, if you're holding the bow correctly and, and you're shooting a hunting, what I consider a hunting weight arrow, there is no hand shock to either of these bows. Um, there is one little difference. This bow here has a, has a, a, a Dynaflight 97 string on it that I, that I had made for it when I bought it. This bow, is the, this string is the bow, the string that came with this bow uh, that that Steve builds. It's a this is a Spectra six five, uh, BCY 652 Spectra. Uh, they're both fast flight type materials, um, and I'm certain that if you're a string builder or you know a string builder, uh, you can play around with all different kinds of of strings and make things just as you know just as comfortable as you as you want them. But uh, back to the bows. Um, I, me personally, <clears throat> the string follow bow 
when I'm out hunting uh, and I'm looking for, you know, looking at taking a shot at, at an animal, uh, and this is going to kind of a segue into what I'm going to talk about speed. Uh, you know, hunting distance, whether you're, whatever your comfortable distance is, whether it's 10 yards, 15, 20, 30, whatever that distance is, uh, within those ranges, you are not, typically, you're not going to be able to tell the difference in the speed of the bow. Uh, uh, if you were to compare, you know, I tried to compare them side by side as best I could out here with my phone, but if you were to compare that, and I think that target was like 17 steps or something, you know, it's between 15 and 20 yards, somewhere in there. And that's a, that's a you know, that's a typical area for a hunting shot. You know, I've had them as close as 10 feet, and I've had them out there 25 yards, but, you know, you want to be close enough to, to put a good shot on the animal. So, uh, if this if this bow is two or three feet per second slower than this bow with the back set, uh, that equates to me, you know, with the shootability of, of a string follow bow, that equates to me at, uh, as I'd rather my bow be three feet a second sh slower and shoot him in the heart than have a bow that's three or four or five feet a second faster and shoot him in the guts. So you, you have to distinguish between what feels good to you and what you're comfortable shooting and I mean I could shoot both of them but if you laid these bows on the table side by side with each other I would pick up the string follow bow and, and hunt with it before I would hunt with this bow if I didn't have a choice I would definitely hunt with this with this bow with a little bit of back set nothing wrong with it at all I mean it's a fantastic bow it's just it's just uh, awesome built in it and it's got plenty of power and speed and uh, it's an excellent bow to shoot. They, they, both of these bows shoot better than I do. So uh, that's, uh, that's, that's just a given. Uh, so to, to directly answer uh, the, the subscri subscriber's question, the guy that sent me the question about uh, which one is best, uh, I don't think there's a best. What I think there is is what feels best to you. Um, I personal, I have some other string follow bows and have had other string follow bows in the past. The reason why I bought this bow is because it became available uh, over the internet and I, I just happened to find it before somebody else did and bought it because I'm, I just, I wanted it. Um, I waited a year for, for the, the other two bows and I'll talk about the takedown in, in another video. It's a, it's a beautiful bow and, uh, and it shoots awesome. Uh, it's a couple of pounds lighter than this bow. but it's not a problem at all. I wouldn't be afraid to hunt anything with it. So, uh, again, this all comes down to personal preference. Um, now, I will say, uh, I did talk to Steve. I like, I, you know, I mentioned in the first video, I did talk to Steve Trey uh, extensively about this video. And, you know, I told him my feelings about it, and he shared some experiences with me. Now, uh, sometime in the past when, when uh, Steve was designing or getting his design or whatever on these bows, he had two bows that were pretty equally matched and he had a fellow, a different a guy that's totally unbiased, had, had him shoot both and apparently this guy was a, uh, a, an awesome shot. Uh, and I think he was shooting at a target 45 or 50 yards away and he had a group uh, probably the size of a cantaloupe at at that distance with the the classic, and then he handed him the the uh, Shelton, which this guy was a, like a gap shooter, and he had a whole system that he used and everything else, and he and uh, Steve instructed him to hold the same gap that he was using with the other bow, and he did, and he shot like twelve arrows, six with one and six with the other, and all six were in a real tight group at that 45 50 yard target and what it stands to re what what that i guess what i'm prefacing here is uh whatever you might and i stress might lose in speed whether it's one two three feet a second in speed between string follow and this classic bow 
uh, is certainly not affected the cast at all and the cast is a big deal um, I rarely, unless it's a hog or something like that, I rarely would shoot at an animal out there at 50 yards. I would shoot at a hog at 50 yards. Trust me, I've done it. But uh, at hunting, at, at normal hunting distances where you're sneaking up on game and you're getting within 10, 15 yards or 20 yards of an animal, uh, there's not going to be any noticeable difference. I mean, it, when you're in that moment, the, big, the biggest thing on your mind is uh, is killing that animal right where he's at, like like I mentioned in another video. So, uh, to to my subscriber, I hope that this helps, um, and and I hope it helps somebody else as far you know that might be shopping a bow, uh, wherever you get it made. Those are some things to think about. Uh, I certainly uh, believe that some some bowyers are probably uh, more experienced or better than other bowyers. Uh, that's something that you're gonna have to make up your mind. But uh, I would certainly uh, give Steve Teray a, a call and talk to him. Uh, if you are shopping a bow, I would definitely check him out. Now, I've kind of landed on uh, the Northern Mist bows and that's why I wanted to do this comparison because I had two that were so closely alike in, in draw weight and, and, and length. Uh, not necessarily bow design, but but uh, that's why I wanted to do this comparison for that for that subscriber to try to help him make up his mind. That just to sum it all up, um, if you're shopping a bow and you're trying to decide between back set and string follow, uh, again, it's your personal uh, choice. Whatever whichever one fits you the best. Me personally, I like string follow bow just because of the different, it's got a different feel. It does not make it easier to pull. It does not make it easier to, to uh, hold or anything like that. It's just strictly the, the draw stroke when you're pulling it. It feels different than it does with a straight limb bow or a back set bow. Uh, and there's no, if you have two bows side by side, there's no marked difference really. Uh, you know, two or three, four feet a second is a difference between a good release and a bad release. Uh, so you're you're not really going to you know change uh, something drastically, uh, something that's that's noticeable, marked noticeable uh, between the two bows. Uh, so anyway, I hope this helps, and uh, I got another video coming up probably in in a few days. I apologize; it's been a while. I've been working. And, uh, and I also have been waiting on this bow to get here. And once it got here, I definitely wanted to make this video to help out. I think his name is Steven. Thank you, Steven, for uh, subscribing to my channel. And uh, if there's anything else I can help you, help you with, just let me know and I'll try to make a video about it. Or if there's some more information about this, these particular bows, I'll be happy to visit with you about it. Uh, you guys have a, have a safe day and uh, enjoy the sunshine because I think it's going to go away tomorrow. We're supposed to start getting some rain again tomorrow. But uh, anyway, uh, happy shooting and you guys shoot straight.